we have a system that generates SQL statements. Can we use DBMS SQL Pass to ensure that they are valid before they run them? And all I can say to that is it's complicated. Um, and so I thought I'd show you a demo as to why that is actually complicated. I thought I'd show you this first as where the motivation for DBMS SQL comes in. Now, that's obviously a lot to digest on one screen. This is a script I use to actually show you some of the results you've seen in previous slides about printing out columns from a table as rows down the screen. And you actually, this is the query I use. And really all you need to look at here in this slide, as you can see, I take a query just defined as a parameter. I parse the query to make sure it's valid. And then I do a describe columns, and then I can actually loop through the columns, do some fetching, and print out each column a row at a time. So we can actually do a little example of this. So let's run it. It'll ask me for a query. I do select star from scott.emp, and hopefully if I type everything right, you can see scott.emp comes out, but it comes out as rows down the screen. That's just a utility we use in Ask Tom because often we have to print out information and we don't want people to have to scroll 37,000 miles across the screen. So you can see that the key part here is we have a query that comes in, but the key line is we use DBMS SQL parse as part of DBMS SQL to actually see if a query is going to work and to get information about it. So it seems tangible that you could actually, or plausible, that you could use this to test the validity of SQLs. And you can in the main. Let's have a look. So let's start with a simple one. Select star from user objects. So in theory, that's a correct SQL. Can I parse it just with a parse call, nothing else? Yes, I can, I don't get any errors. So far, so good. And then let's try the negative of that. I'm doing select star from something that doesn't exist, select star from the wrong name. I run that and I get an error. So far, so good. So for basic select statements, DBMS SQL.parse is going to be fine for testing the validity. Let's now create a table called T. And what happens if I try parse DDL? So now I've just got drop table T. Is that a valid statement or not? It says, yes, it was valid. But here's problem number one, or issue number one, or things to be aware of number one with DBMS SQL.parse. When you parse DDL, you run the DDL. So you can see my table is gone because it actually ran the drop table command. Got to be super careful with DDL. You can't test a DDL to see if it's valid without actually running it. One exception to that is you can do an explain plan for create table as select, an explain plan for create index, and it'll give you the execution plan without running those two commands, but that's the only two that I know of. You can't do a parse on a truncate because it'll actually run the truncate. Let's now look at things like anonymous blocks. So I've got here a peel SQL block, very basic one, declare a variable, set it to 10, et cetera. Yes, you can parse that as well. That's cool. Let's now parse an anonymous block that calls a non-existing procedure. I've got a procedure here called gibberish, and as you can see, that works as well. So it's doing a reasonable job with peel SQL code as well. Let's now look at anonymous blocks with no peel SQL calls in them, right? Except one slight change here. Now I've got a bind variable. And systems that generate SQL on the fly, I would generally hope contain references to bind variables, because if you're just generating SQL with literals, there's a very good chance you're setting yourself up for SQL injection problems here. So obviously, as we all know, we have to be incredibly careful when we're doing generating SQLs from user input anyway. But even if you have a system that's doing it, then obviously we want to be using bind variables. That works fine. That's looking good so far. Let's now do this. I've got a bind variable and it equals, but it's wrong and it incorrect. So it seems to handle bind variables as well. That's no dramas. Let's take it up a notch. Now I'm calling this non-existent routine and I'm passing a bind variable as a parameter. Well, that's unexpected. And what's going on here? One of the things that we do in the PL SQL engine is we decide when something needs to be fully checked for correctness. Now, if you have a anonymous block that is syntactically correct, like the one there, it actually is theoretically compilable if gibberish came into existence, but it has a bind variable, then we actually won't do the full parsing that's after the syntactic until execution time. So that's why it says it's fine. Because what we're doing is we don't really know whether this is valid or not until we know the full definition of the bind variable. We might need to know its data type, et cetera. Until we can compare, for example, data types of the binds with the data types of the parameters, we don't really know. So this is what I want to stress to you. It's very, very important to realize that 
if you start using binds inside PL SQL blocks, parsing them is actually deferred to execution time. So just getting that result of saying successfully completed shows that it actually is incorrect because that is actually not going to run. Just to extend it, I've got, you know, it's not just that, I've got junk, more junk, et cetera, et cetera, right? We have these problems just because I've got this assignment to a bind variable in here. So trying to work around it by declaring it locally and then referencing it as a local variable doesn't matter. The moment you've got that bind in there right, and you're using a PLC anonymous block, if it's syntactically correct, it's not gonna get really any further than that. So just wanna let people know that's a, an issue that you need to be aware of. I've actually logged an enhancement request to actually have some means for developers to do a, or what I would call a full parse of, of any piece of Oracle text. Obviously it'll be prioritized and accepted or rejected accordingly. So just so I'll let you know, what else have I got here? Um, if it is a function, you can actually get a little bit better by doing select your function name with the bind from dual and you will actually pick it up. The SQL engine will actually do a more complete parse even though the bind is there. I think that's everything. So just thought I'd let you know that, testing SQL validity, you can do it in the main using DBMS SQL parse as in most, most facilities, but there are a few uh, edge cases that you need to be aware of. I need to be